Okay, here we are, episode four in the moment. Um, this one is going to be titled uh, Caution, I'm Emotional, and uh, I Quit Today, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of emotions that go into it. Um, I wanted to record this podcast on on a Monday. This is all, you know, all me editing and everything, and when I feel something to talk about, um, I want to be able to put out the content. So, um, we're Monday after this past weekend. We we just raced in Vegas in the Xfinity car with Joe Gibbs Racing. It was uh, it was uh, not the weekend I wanted for sure. Not the performance that I wanted to put out this weekend as well. I guess as a as a race recap, we started off the race. We had to start 20th, and we were driving through the field pretty good. I, I had it in my mindset. I wanted to try to get up and win stage one and make sure I proved the point, um, show everybody, you know, what I can do. And that's kind of been my mindset all off season. The way that things have gone down, I've just been real fired up to, to try to go reprove a point of I know I can, I should be in the Cup Series and be a Cup Series driver, and that I can win races there and. So um, I've been driving with that intensity, that fire inside of me and focused on that every weekend when I race. And, um, you know, it definitely was in me to start the race in in Vegas and was coming up through the field. Our car was on the on the real loose side, but it was it had great speed. I knew we just had to get to the front, but I think I was just pushing a little too hard to to get it there quicker. And um, I got in underneath the one car in, in stage T stage two. Um, spun out, caused a little damage to the car. The damage didn't affect our race, but uh, we only had five sets of tires. Everyone did, and um, that burned a set of tires up for us that we didn't get to have at the end of the race. Um, we rebounded, came all the way back through the field. We're inside the top ten, and uh, late race, race caution got us. We didn't have any tires left, and everybody else in the field did, so we had to stay out, start on the front row. Um on really old tires and we're sliding back probably ninth or 10th and on the on the restart and unfortunately my spotter's um radio went dead so he was changing over the radio uh and it took you know uh, half a lap or so for him to do that and it was silent on the radio and someone got to my outside and never knew they were there and um you know, I um, I still haven't seen a replay, but I either chopped him or something. It, it totally was probably my fault. I had no clue they were there. And, um, ruined a couple days, ruined our day, and uh, a couple other cars. So, and I think for me, it's just the disappointment is I don't I don't tear race cars up in my career. That's that's been my strong suit is no DNFs, not tearing things up, being there at the finish, being able to capitalize and to start these first three opportunities and in some of the best equipment I've ever gotten an opportunity to drive and crash in Daytona with a winning car, have a bolt go through the radiator in Homestead with a winning car, um, have another car capable of winning the race at good speed. We got it better and better as the day went on and, um, you know, tear up another car. It just, uh, it, it de- definitely works on you. And, um, I think that's kind of why I want to talk about this on a Monday. Um, you, you try to, you try to figure it out in your head afterwards, um, you know, after whether it's racing or your regular job or at home when things don't really go the way that you planned and um, you're disappointed. You try to figure out, OK, well, what well, I do at least typically try to figure out what what's my next plan to focus on to prepare for the next opportunity and move forward. And uh, where is that going to be? And for me right now, it's 21 days away looking at the Bristol Dirt Race. Um, and, and NASCAR, 21 days feels like 21 years uh, when you get your next opportunity to go try and, and prove what you can do. And I think, you know, traveling home late after the race Saturday night and then Sunday being at home and having to watch another cup race at home on TV is is not easy when you are um, you feel like you are mentally and physically should be in, in the race there. And um and all this may sound like whining and complaining, but this is just my life, and I want to transfer it straight to those who care or are interested. And um, it's all within good perspective of I am very blessed to get to drive race cars. This has been my career, but this has also been my whole life. And just like anybody else, when you've worked really hard for something, um, it's taken many years of your life to get somewhere, a lot of time and effort. 
Um, you want to see it through. You want to see it to what your end goal was. And um, I'm just in a place where I feel like at the end of last year, I'm the best I've ever been mentally and physically as an as a race car driver. Um, and as soon as I started getting close to that point where I feel like I was you know, getting on the right track of knowing how to improve my mind and body and um, work ethic every single weekend, you never stop getting better. But you know, I really feel like getting to a good place. The opportunities have dwindled and become few and far between. Um, you know, which makes you really aggressive and hungry when you do get the opportunity to go try to prove a point. And um, needless to say, that that I'm disappointed with the way that the start of this year has gone for myself and the uncertainties of the future for my career. Um, you know, having two kids and a wife, I want to be able to make sure that I can provide for a family for a long time in this and. Um, it, it brings a lot of emotion and, and I have finally come around to realize that I am an emotional guy. Um, and I think, you know, just this morning as I take Oakley to school and come back and I'm thinking of all the things I need to do and want to do. And, uh, you know, we have two, two kids and a three-year-old little girl who's a fun little wild tornado. And we're picking up clothes and cleaning the house 24 seven. And Haley and I do, pretty much everything around our house and every every aspect of life we we handle it ourselves so it can become quite overwhelming just having two kids and then you know on the on the backs of of working to rekindle my career i um (laughs) i came home and uh like a typical man i was grumpy and mad and wanting to blame things on everybody else and finally i think two of my superpowers arose. Um, one of them is that I've learned as I've grown up is, is, uh, you know, to just be able to talk about what is bothering me. Um, and, and that superpower incl- includes, uh, as a man, it's sometimes tough to release your emotions. And, uh, when you're hurt and you're upset and, uh, I just <laughs> broke down today in the kitchen of, uh, of our house and, uh, just told my wife I can't do this anymore. The stress is is hurting my heart. Um, I want to I want to be a top series NASCAR driver, and um, I want to be a top notch dad and husband, and be able to do it all well and have it all go good. And right now, um, the racing side is really hard and and uncertain, and I think that uncertainty just drives anyone crazy uh when you don't know what's you know coming around the corner and like i said at the beginning i know this is all in in contrast to to life and uh, everyone has troubles but i think as men we tend to hold things in and and just say you know i'll tough it out and move on and and uh, i'll just kind of swallow down the, the pain of this and keep digging you know take a hit and keep keep clicking and i think for some of us, for all of us, our our power is in saying, "I can't do this all on my own," and um, you know, to just release that tension of we have to bear it all. And um, I think that's kind of the first superpower I hit on. And then for me, the the greatest superpower I have is is my wife and my partner in life to be able to release emotion to to have somebody to talk to. Um, to say that I, I quit today and I don't want to do this anymore. It hurts me. This is too tough. Um, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to go to a beach and lay on my back and bury my head in the sand and just have the sun hit me for a week and do nothing and, and just hope that things fix itself. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's not how life works. But uh, that's how I felt this morning, sitting in the middle of our floor in the kitchen, talking to my wife. We were both sitting there and with tears. And and uh, but in that time, you're able to release those emotions. And as you release emotions, I found you you grow you grow holes and you open up space in your heart and your mind to to find hope again, to get strength again, to to work out today, to to call people and knock on doors to try to get some more funding, to get more opportunities, to to get up and help your wife and to help move things along in life. And 
I don't, I can't sit here and say, you know, I'm not a motivational speaker in the sense of it's all going to work out. And, you know, you work harder than anybody and everything's going to work out. I don't, I don't know if it's going to work out, but I do know I want to live my life with positivity and hope and courage and to try to spend every day making people I encounter, uh, especially my family and my wife and kids, um, to be the best person I can to them and to provide a good example for them and uh, be someone that people enjoy being around. And I think when we hold on to things, we, we lose sight of that. So um, today I just I just wanted to not come on as a motivational speaker, not come on as woe is me and please help fix my situation guy, um, but just where I'm at in my life. And I'm sure... And I feel confident that other people in life or other men, other women are in the same situation. And it's okay to share your emotions and to to let them go and say to someone you know, you love, you care about. And even if it's not a person, God cares, Jesus cares, and he's with us through all these times. And nine times out of ten when Haley and I are in this situation, we we rely on him and knowing that he doesn't promise to make things perfect in our life or great or fix everything. He's not a genie, but he's there for us and he loves us and he's shedding tears alongside of our pain and we can talk to him and uh, we are so loved by a good, good father and uh, earth isn't supposed to be, our life on earth isn't supposed to be the easiest thing or the perfect place because God created a perfect place and it's called heaven. And we all get to go there one day if, if we believe in him. And it's going to be amazing. These things that don't make sense will make sense. Um, and it's going to be a beautiful place. But it doesn't mean you can't work through things here, have hope here, have courage here, be positive knowing that this is this isn't it we have eternity in a perfect place where all these things will make sense um and uh i hope i can be encouraging through a time of stress in my life um and uh i think hopefully my social channels can be a platform for people to just relate on a real level of life is not easy it's hard for everyone in different struggles and um, even if you have to direct message just me or on a comment and just if you want to share if it feels good to share share if not I hope that you can share with your family if not like I said earlier God cares Jesus is listening and he's with you every day um, I think that's the peace and hope that we have to get up every day on the hard days on the hard weeks when you're on the verge of just wanting to give up and quit that you mean a lot to this world. You mean a lot to people. You mean everything to Jesus and you're here for a reason. And for me, my selfish personal reason is I want to win races, but maybe for God, it's that I have a lot of people to impact um, in this sport or with the platform that I have. It might not be about winning races, but I'm going to wake up every day trying to win races. And uh, God's great at, at using me for what what he needs me to do and, and to be used for in life and I think that's all we can we can ask for so everyone out there you're important we're all important even though sometimes things don't work out the way that we might dream them up that day isn't wasted the people you impact in your day isn't wasted that that month year job opportunity is never wasted so I hope to encourage people today to keep keep moving in the right direction keep being hopeful uh, keep digging um, knowing that good things are happening from your life and uh, yeah I hope this can help people out it's definitely helping me to talk about it I'm not a philosopher I'm not a perfect speaker Um, this is what's going on in my life and uh, I hope that uh, at least somebody out there finds it encouraging and uh, I will be back on the track in Bristol, uh, the dirt race, the cup race, and then back in Talladega after that. So 
Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be working out hard. I'm going to be riding my go-kart and GoPro and uh, probably give you guys some updates on on um, podcast. But uh, I'm going to try to, you know, work really hard, but also um, spend time with, with my beautiful wife and kids with the off weekends that we haven't had in this time of year and in, in pretty much 10 years, uh, nine and a half years that, that Haley and I have, have been together. So um, it's going to be a unique, challenging, up and down emotional time for sure going forward. But it's going to be, there's going to be blessings within each day. So I um, hope you guys enjoy this podcast. This is episode four. And uh, yeah, I'm emotional and I quit today. <laughs> I think that's going to be the title.